OK. So for this lab in lab four of advanced GIS, uh, we're going to do principal component analyses. And what that is is a statistical method when you have many different variables that may relate to something that you want to visualize or quantify, um, but it's hard to kind of display many variables at once. And so we can collapse all the variants in, the, in how these variables relate to one another into just a few different um, bands or principal components uh, that will allow us to either visualize or describe um, the phenomenon more easily. And so that's generally what principal component analysis is. Uh, we'll do this in two ways. One, we're going to, and this is the first part, we're going to do this using Landsat uh, remote sensing data to map uh, geology across an arid land um, with remote sensing data. In the other way, uh, we'll use census data to see how uh, people vary across the landscape in terms of their social vulnerability and how that might relate to things such as environmental hazards. OK, so for the first part of the lab, I've provided to you um, this Landsat scene, bands one through seven, um, which are mostly just visible land. Uh, sorry, visible light and near infrared and shortwave infrared light. And this can be quite useful for mapping geology. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, so uh, first thing I recommend is to kind of open up some of the data from last lab, lab three, where you're studying Pleasant Creek watershed. So I've got the watershed shape file, the lines, and the trunk stream open for me, and we're interested in, in, in doing mapping over this broad region, but really focusing in on the watershed. The other thing that I've provided for you in the folder is uh, the Golden Throne quadrangle, which shows, um, it, which is uh, highlighting the geology through the water pocket fold of this part of Capitol Reef National Park where Pleasant Creek makes its way through. And so we're going to see if we can kind of reproduce the boundaries of these geologic contacts through the principal component analysis of the Landsat data. Um, for your own visualization purposes, you might want to take these individual bands um, bands two, three, four, four, five, six, and seven. Two is blue, three is green, four is red, five is near infrared, and then these are two different shortwave infrared bands. Uh, but you might want to just see an RGB red, green, blue image uh, to start with. And so uh, if you wanted to do that and you have um, satellite image and Basically, what you need to do is stick those things together. Um, and so I think composite bands, yeah, creates a single raster data set from multiple bands. So if you wanted to do that, you could say, OK, I want to bring in red, which is band four. And I always bring that one in first because red, green, blue is the way um, color theory works, even though blue is shorter wavelength, so it really should come first. But uh, red, green, blue, band four, band three, band two, and then let's output that as um, Landsat 9, L9, uh, RGB, and this is 9-23-22, September 23rd, 2022 is when I get the data from. OK, run. <clears throat> so this is processing over a large area. It could take a minute. OK, so while that's running, I'll talk a bit more. Uh, so that's going to give us hopefully a red, green, blue image, a natural color image of the region. Yeah, there it is, right? It looks kind of right. So the high topography looks 
Like it's got some vegetation and green. Oh, look at that. It was aspens were even starting to get a little turned up there towards the end of September. Um, and then as you get out in the Colorado Plateau, you see a lot more colors of like the shales in here and the reds of the Colorado Plateau. Yeah, so there's our natural color image, our band composite. Now we, we've got it right, right? Band one is red. OK, if we had brought it in the other way, band one would have been looking like band three, and this would have been looking like that, and then our colors would be all funky, right? So uh, remember that when you make a composite image. OK, so there it is. So I'll turn that off. We've got it there if we want it uh, to, for display purposes mostly. Um, now, so this Landsat data uh, is all like 30 meter pixels. So if we zoom in, we'll see it's, it's quite pixelated. Um, imagine how many LIDAR pixels you got within each one of those. Um, but, you know, from the scale of a watershed, it's quite nice for kind of looking at the landscape. Sorry, it's trying to draw a lot of things at once. I should probably turn some of these off. But yeah, there's my watershed boundary. Yeah, I don't want anything inside of there. Let's just make it a black outline. Don't need my drainages, really. Just put the trunk stream on there. And then let's turn off some of these so it quits drawing them every five seconds. Renders a little bit better now. OK, so yeah, there's my watershed, uh, my nice uh, RGB Landsat image. I can see structurally through here, there's really interesting things. You can see this, um, the front of the water pocket fold here. And we can see some of these units bending around across that fold. So the fold axis is like right in here. Uh, we have other parts of like folded units out here. We can see these geologic units sticking up into the air. Um, and then others kind of eroded nicely across there. OK, so um, one way to simplify some of our analyses is to cut our data, right? So um, we can basically clip, cookie cutter, our Pleasant Creek watershed. So if I go back to appearance, I don't want it to be transparent anymore. So we want to use that cookie cutter and just minimize the Landsat data to there. Save us some time. So uh, clip raster. Data management tools. So what you're going to want to do here, actually, if you go back up, click on the data management tools is another great reason to go to where it is. Uh, you should know that every time you do a processing, if you've got multiple of these, like we have six of them, we can batch clip. So we can say, OK, I'm going to batch through rasters and I'm going to make this a temporary tool. So I go next. And so then I would batch through all of these, right? So you have to it's like in this temporary, we're not just going through a folder, but input all the ones you want to do this to. And then we need the uh, the key thing is the clipping extent, which would be the watershed. And then we have to check that we use the input features for the clipping geometry. And then the way this is named is uh, we can see it's clip out raster percent name. So it's basically going to just return this name between the percent values here and then whatever you put in front will be uh, the add. So I'm just going to say clip percent name. I'll add it too because I've already practiced this in case that makes a mistake. OK, so we run through that it should be pretty quick. And so that should create for us all, reproduce all of these ones I just turned off. 
um, but only over the Pleasant Creek watershed. And yeah, you can see they're sitting right on top of there in black and white. Turn them off too. Okay, great. So um, one remote, so now the rest of what we're going to do before we do pleasant, uh, sorry, before the PCA, the principal component analysis, is we go back to geoprocessing, we back up, we're going to be mostly using raster math. So we go to spatial analyst and it's called map algebra raster calculator, sorry. Um, and so I'm going to have quite a few things open in here. So to see that better, um, so there's my clip two and then each of the bands that I have. Um, so uh, one thing that you might do is make an NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index map, to show where there is quite a bit of vegetation. Because this, uh, what we're going to do is uh, kind of this band math to look at geology, but you can't really do that if there's vegetation sitting over the geology. So we kind of know then where this might not work so well. So um, what the, that is, is basically it's a ratio between the difference in near infrared versus red, because vegetation strong that's photosynthesizing is really strongly reflective in near infrared, but it doesn't look red. So we do that difference divided by the addition. And so wherever those values are positive, it'll be possible that there's some component of that uh, pixel that has some photosynthesis going on. Wherever it's near zero or below zero, it definitely doesn't have a lot of vegetation actively photosynthesizing. So we just do band five plus, sorry, not plus, minus, let's start over. Uh, band five minus band four, put that in parentheses, And then divided by, and then parentheses again, band five show up plus double click each time, band four close parentheses, and the output um, call it PC nine twenty three twenty two because that's the date and DVI. Of course, this is transient, right? Because you know, photosynthesis changes throughout the year. So might as well put the date. OK, so the output of this right is in this black and white image here, but it might might be nice to make this kind of a false color. Um, and you could even maybe classify it. And so we could then look at the histogram and basically, let's have a color scheme. Which kind of goes green to red. And. We want the greens to be positive. So kind of want to flip that. Hurt that. Red to green. OK, this is kind of a red to green. OK. So now. Um, I'm going to make this. So. We really want it to shift at particular values, so. Um, well, actually, this is not horrid. Everything seems a little frozen here. See if I can close that. Yeah, I guess I can. So it's not completely. Okay, let's go back in here. 
OK, so go into the symbology. Okay, go back to the histogram. So um, strongly photosynthesizing is probably above like 0.3. So not much of this landscape. So I could adjust that there. Um, and then maybe 0.2 is also kind of. And then we could put this back at near zero. Well, let's just you know, where is zero? It's good type in here. Right. Edit value zero. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed because this is not zero. OK, so. This is basically showing us that there is maybe some vegetation and all these kind of teal areas, not really much anywhere else. Um, if we didn't want to look at like this. Um, we could always do a stretched color. And then we'd probably want to. Go over the whole range. And to red, but invert it. And so, yeah, the areas in green are really where it's vegetation, the others are not. So there's not much of this landscape that's like that. That's the bottom line. OK, so NDVI kind of helps us out a bit there. Okay, so turn that off. OK. So to do these other bands, what you're going to do is use, you're going to produce something like this. But to get there, we're going to use these uh, geologic um, band combinations. Um, and so here they are. So band six divided by seven is supposed to highlight areas with clay minerals. So basically these geologic band combinations are uh, about hiring, highlighting different uh, mineral concentrations within the soils, which relate back to the rocks. Four divided by two iron oxides, four divided by six ferrous iron oxides, ferric iron, four divided by three, Gaussian, six divided by four, seven divided by six ferrous silicates, six divided by five ferric oxides. And so, of course, this is a lot of things to display. Um, but so that's the whole thing with the principal component. We'll create all of these different uh, rasters of these ratios. And then we'll see how they vary together and highlight the principal components in three bands and display them as false color to show where the geologic difference is. So first thing we have to do is create each of those bands. That are ratios and we can do that right in raster calculator. And so again, you're going to want to make this so you can see what the band number is. So you're going to want to go six divided by seven in that equals my um, plays, and then you could say, just to remind yourself, 6D7, and then run that. So 
in the past when you use raster calculator and arc map, sometimes you get errors um, because the inputs are integers and the output is ratio, which has decimals, but I'm happy to see that raster calculator and arc pro is not coming up with that issue. So right away we can see, oh wow, it pops out. We see these bright colors here. So those rocks must have a lot of clays. And so must this. And these, these are soils down by the river. It's a lot of clay there. But that, that geologic unit has a lot of clays, maybe here too, and some in here. And then these ones don't seem to have a lot of clays, surprisingly. Um, or maybe they're different types of clays. But then you just go through these. So you can do all of that. So keep going through four divided by two. So each time double click to get the one you want in there. Double click division four divided by two, which is near infrared divided by blue. And that's supposed to highlight concentrations of iron oxide. So we can call it iron oxides and then 4d2 and so that produced us a different looking map than the other one now the light colors are located in different areas than the dark so you keep going through and doing this over and over again until you get all of these I've already done that, so I'll show you that down here below. So here are my results down here. Move them all up. Come with me. Drag up. Okay, and then, oh, since I already have these, I'm going to remove the others. I brought the wrong ones up. OK, so hopefully you've gone through um, and made all of those geologic band combinations. And if we kind of click through them, you can see they each are showing us different things, different differences in the landscape. OK, and so that's wonderful. And it shows it's basically showing us a lot of change in those soils. And so the next thing we're going to do is a principal component analysis once we've got all of those band ratios done. And so that sits in multivariate statistics within spatial analysts principal components. So you'll input each of those geologic band ratios. We can't show all of them at once. So the idea here so we're going to see how they all relate to one another and create new data, which will be in these principal components. And the first three of those principal components will show most of the variance in the data and allow us to display a red, green, blue image, false color, uh, which will basically uh, allow us to distinguish where the geology changes. So we can call these geology PCA for Pleasant Creek. And we want to output a data file. Definitely do that. 
and it's going to give us a table of the principal component analysis. So we call it um, geology, PCA um, analysis table, whatever you wanted, and then we'll get our raster. So let's run that. Give us a wonderful false color image of wild and different colors. And if we zoom in on it, we can see it's pixelated, but we can see some really stark contrast, right, between the blues and the browns and pinks and purples. Um, and if we in our geologic map and bring it up next to this, I bet we can see some differences showing up in here. So we zoom in this white area down here. This is the JN. This stands for the Navajo sandstone. People are probably familiar with that one. OK, that one is kind of showing up this pink to yellow in here. We can see it kind of working its way through up there. It seems to be working. There's another color at its boundary. Right in here, it's kind of bluish fringe. And that's showing us maybe this different thing, this JPC. And then there's a JPR, which is showing up as this kind of brown unit. And then it contrasts this blue unit, which is this JC. WG, that's the Wingate sandstone. And then as we move down, we get to kind of this Yusha, this Entrada sandstone is showing up as another color. And even where there's like a Quaternary Terrace it's sitting on top of that Entrada, um, or something like a, a Quaternary unit, it shows up as a different color there. That's cool. And then the yeah, the the river sediments and the geomorphic surfaces are showing up different along the there as well. And so yeah, I think we're definitely seeing the geology through here. And we can see uh, this purple unit wraps all the way around from one side to the other. What's that? So that is TRMT. TRMT. Yeah, it shows up nicely and it's got this other unit within it. TRMS. So I believe that is uh, going to be the Moen Kopi. And above that is the Chin Li which is sitting here in this area. And it's showing up as yellow here. But yeah, the geologic uh, information is definitely coming through in terms of the difference. I think if you look right here, we can see nicely this kind of contrasting line through here. That's actually showing up as a fault on the geologic map. Um, yeah, so it's really done. The principal component analysis has done a great job of showing us geologic difference. If we go up here where we have more vegetation, it could be a little bit different. Let's see how it did. Oh, we're outside of our geologic map, so we can't test that. Uh, so yeah, stick your analysis uh, to the area of this geologic map. And so what I would recommend is maybe some kind of side by side comparisons. Um, you're going to want to look at the PDF for this geologic map, which I've placed in the folder to know what the types of minerals are. And uh, you're also going to want to um, compare uh, the principal components within the data table. So we can open that up. That table in here or elsewhere, you can open it up on another screen. 
And the information in here is going to tell us about the input rasters, how they varied with one another, um, the principal components that were produced, how much percent of variance do each one of those principal components represent. We can see that three of them cover 94.6% of the variance in the data. Uh, four go up to 99%, so really it collapses all the difference into just a few bands. And then if we look through details in this table, we can kind of see which of those original bands might also relate. OK, and so we'll talk about that in class. Uh, I want you to kind of think about, uh, based upon the geology, what's important from those input bands to the principal components as well. OK, so this is uh, your kind of tutorial for getting started with that part one of the lab. So I'll stop this video here.